Urzin cha sumsi ju action this is why didn't india rebel during world war 1 or world war 2 short animated documentary but you know history matters yeah some of the history matter video it's been a while it's about india so why the hell not yeah why didn't india rebel during world war 1 world war 2 hmm because we didn't thought it was appropriate i mean when you're fighting a world war this that's not a proper way to like rebel that time yeah let's go with that one <laughs> i don't know man i think mostly is because Uh, yeah, uh, rebel like there have been rebellions before World War One, uh, which was caused many times. Uh, so why didn't uh, you know it happened during uh, World? I mean, it did happen during World War Two, didn't it? World War Two was the reason why the rebellion was successful in the first place, because Britain was like preoccupied with Nazi Germany and Hitler, right? And during that time, like uh, they couldn't focus that much resources in India. so like they had to back down like leave india in a way and obviously india doing its india thing with gandhi and many other uh, you know rebels right fighters so yeah if any other time i don't know if india's rebellion would have been successful Br- british who was like technological superior than india would have crossed it just like every single time so world war 2 was the reason why india could rebel and be successful why didn't do, do it during world war 1 i don't know i guess like there there must be some Uh, I don't know. There needs to be factors there, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure like there are uh, Bengal famine and many things like that played its role into the you know like a rebellion that was successful during World War Two. So there has to be factors like that. So yeah, just things led to uh, you know World War Two area rebellion that was successful, right? 1947. That's when uh, India gained its independence. But on the same time, like World War Two ended, so yeah, it did do did happen during World War Two. But yeah, let's watch this one. Up in India, the Indian people have wanted them gone. As you know, this took a while. But interestingly, whilst Britain was embroiled in both world wars and fighting for both hegemony and its very survival, India didn't try to rebel. This raises the question: Why? Why didn't the Indian people revolt against British rule during World War One or World War Two? So in the decade leading up to the First World War, India was not exactly an easy place for Britain to run. Political movements calling for independence, most notably the Indian National Congress, had been around for decades, but now their organisation and influence was growing. When in 1905, Lord Curzon, the Viceroy of India, opted to divide Bengal into two to separate the Indian and Muslim populations, the Indians reacted poorly. They collectively boycotted British goods, and some more radical revolutionaries attempted to assassinate British officials, which led to the partition being reversed. Things stayed heated, with the more radical members of the INC gaining momentum and thus being seen as the most likely to win India its independence. 1912 saw another attempt on the life of the British viceroy, but a mere two years later, when Britain's attention was elsewhere, there was no attempt at breaking free. So why not? Well, there were several reasons. One, the British had become quite adept at rounding up and arresting any agitators who wanted to achieve independence through violence. Yeah, crowd video. If anybody haven't seen crowd video on like how Indian society have been run, definitely check that out. That basically makes you think like how India was run. First of all, people always say like before 1947 there was no India, so India began in 1947. Like not really. Indian society worked as a caste system, mostly religious based. right anything beyond industry war was considered india it's in the like vedic text and everything but was it run as like a empire not really not like how china was running so what that did is like there was no one central thing that would revolve right that would like actually fight back against like things rise up at some places princes of that area indian princes somehow becomes like you know like corrupted and in, in the hands of like british empire and just like squashed sometimes becomes too big and britain 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 british themselves squashed so there was never a big uproar at that level that would do it there have been some but yeah british always squashed but like i said bengal famine and a lot of poorly handled things by britain basically pissed off a lot of people in india that became like a one big movement right and like gandhi and some figures right became like a poster uh, child to like okay this is happening uh, even in india there's a movement of people say like gandhi didn't do much right why is gandhi regarded as this as many other freedom fighter you're not wrong but gandhi was like a face of it right that that figure is really important because otherwise people are not going to join you need that kind of thing even in today's world a lot of organizations need faces for this reason right dodobli here john cena 
was John Cena the best wrestler, the best that was happening? No, but that was the phase that they run with it. Everybody didn't see that as that, right? So, you know, Gandhi was basically that. And it's just like everything came together like, oh, this is perfect time. World War II is happening, people are pissed off. A lot of movement is happening. A lot of freedom fighters, like, you know, like really intense. This is the time to do it. And during the war, the British passed an act which allowed what was called preventative indefinite detention. And those arrested did not have a good time. Two, whilst independence movements were growing in popularity, many in India didn't feel like they were. Oh yeah, Kalapani, right? There's like a there's a place near Bengal or something like a prison Kalapani or something like that. It, it's such a famous thing in India. People remember that, like, oh, that was some fucked up thing. Presented them, but the big reason that Britain won the allegiance of many Indian elites was by promising dominion status to India, which to many there was seen as the first step to independence. The issue with this promise was that after the war was over, it was quickly forgotten about. The British then passed the Rowlatt Act, which allowed the British to jail any Indian for up to two years for literally any reason they could think of. So when World War II began, it would be safe to assume that the Indians would refuse to fight. But fun fact, no. Whilst India had received... Yeah, many British people must be pissed off in the comments. I made some British video and I try to stay unbiased, not unbiased, biased against India because I'm an Indian, Indian basically. So I try to try to say neg Indians get pissed off on my comments like why are you saying this this and are you Indian, but that's why I'm not saying that much positive things about Indian because I'm an Indian. People will see that as biased. So, so some a lot of times scales shifts towards you know like me thinking Western things more than the Indian things, right? Even then, like I see people in the comments like okay, British was like, Britain was like a really fair ruler. They had this and this law and this like. Are you serious right now? Like the shit like this, right? Like. Britain can jail anybody up to two years without any reason or something. How is that fucking fair in any book, right? People always pick and choose and mold their own picture like, oh, everything was going perfect. Really? Is that what you're going to say? Is that what feeling every British colony has? Like Britain was so perfect. Come on. Received some local autonomy, it wasn't very much. And when Britain went to war, India's viceroy was right behind them. Shockingly, this upset the people there who, of course, weren't asked. And thus, many Indians refused to fight for Britain. Whilst Indians just wanted rid of Britain, the overwhelming majority saw Germany and Japan as worse. Armed rebellion wasn't on the table because the British had already arrested anyone who may have thought it was a good idea. But as you'll know, many Indian leaders actively pushed for non-violent resistance. Yeah, I mean, you know, there was a time which is like, uh, when Churchill basically said, screw Indians, right, let's think about British first. And when the famine was happening, literally took away grains and things that could have helped, which is like a biggest dick move you can have. Churchill is seen worse than Hitler in here. At least that's how it's been for years. Now internet is becoming a thing. People are getting more educated at the international level. But even then, people are still going to remember Churchill as really that level of thing. So in India, Churchill was in India. Churchill was worse than Hitler for people. Right? But then they saw what is happening, how Japan was being aggressive around Burma and things. So yeah, Indians fought against Japanese, basically everybody knows about like, you know, fight in Burma and things. And so like, okay, yeah, Hitler and Japanese, they are, prob they are worse than the Britain, even though Britain are the occupiers. Basically, you, have to, you, you know, uh, Japan and Nazi Germany was so bad that India was like, okay, you know what, let's not think about Britain right now, let's think about Germany and Japan. That's how fucked up they are. That's how it happened. In 1942, the Quit India movement called for a general strike across India. In response, the British arrested most Indian nationalist leaders. That said, the impact of the movement wasn't actually too bad for the British war effort. However, the sheer number of people who had turned out in support made it clear that India couldn't be kept in the empire much longer. Whilst many Brits wished to see India, or at least a part of it, remain a part of the empire, in Britain itself, opposition was growing rapidly to it. And the Labour Party, who won the 1945 election, did so having promised to grant India independence, which was completed two years later. I hope you enjoyed this episode with a special thanks to my patrons, James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Sky Chappelle. There you go. Yeah. So the piece is just moved in a way that that was a perfect time, a lot of movements. Like this was like a, you know, like very short documentary, so you can't cover a lot of things. But yeah, many Indian nationalist movements, like Gandhi was a mastermind, right? He, he studied law in South Africa and like a lot of shit he was doing in the background. Like he knew when to strike when, well, where the iron is hot in many elements. Many other like, you know, big, uh, you know, national leaders, right? At the time were, were kind of like mastermind in that area as well. And they realized what is happening. They realized what is happening in the world stage. How is Nazi Germany and everything is working, right? So they just like, it was a perfect time for them to do this. So 
Indian, uh, you know, Indian independence, like one of the few independence you can think of on the global scale that happened just a perfect time because any other time it wouldn't have worked, right? Uh, because India is such a big country, right? Uh, such a big stake, right? And how Britain has like for centuries kept it under under wraps, right? Uh, quashed rebellions over and over again because India's spices and things were like really important. So when Indian independence happened, that was like a really critical moment. It was like a genius movie in a way, if you really study all that. But yeah. Right, well, that was why did India rebel during World War One, World War Two. Kind of did during World War Two. But yeah, if, uh, you know, this is my channel, History Matters. If you like my channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.